Nel Shabbos Kodem. So whatever you do have, is, hey, how are you? Whatever you do have, you should uh, spend on the Nel because it's more important than the white. Hey, how are you? The good man is here. You don't need me. Temporary. You don't need me. No, once you say that you got stuck in Kornites, I figure... That's a good stuff. It's a black driver. I want to hear that. I want to hear that. If somebody black you drive in the morning, now you're ready to walk, that you need to pay you, let's say you lost half an hour or four or five minutes because of that. You need to pay for that time that you lost. I think we need to give a share. Now that I figure out, the guy didn't have license plates. I looked, yeah. and I looked, I felt the car door was open. I was beeping for a long time, hoping he's going to come out. Open the car door. I see he had a bingo bag. I said, okay, he's a Jewish guy. Yeah. Go to the glove yeah. compartment. I saw his name on the Jewish name on the registration. Yeah. He had a chitas in the car. He had a name on the chitas, and it had his phone number yeah. there. And I yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. He didn't yeah. live in the car. Yeah. He likes or what? Says it didn't mean I was. I thought it was the pump, not the car. You know, I said, "Listen, I said I would never do that to anyone." I said, "That's what I can tell you." I have I have this problem every once in a while, but it's usually from the guy in that. Because you you the you know, guy across the street in the apartment building, he has like three four cars. He you know, visiting his cars, and uh-huh, uh-huh. he he stopped for a while. Uh, okay. Okay, the how, how long did you have to wait for him to move his car? This guy? He wouldn't have no, moved it. I mean, how long until you, until you sort of license, until you sort of your information, until you move it? I'm just curious. 20 minutes? I didn't have license. license. Uh, on the and he had like some Georgia temporary license plate in the yeah, back. Yeah. What does that have to do with that? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is. The last aloha, if somebody doesn't have money to buy wine, on there, mm-hmm. Ner is more important than the wine. Right. Kiddush is the Rabbonon, and Ner is the Ner Metzvah with Tehra Oye. Okay, so I buy say. Where are we holding? We are holding, I think we are holding Sif Yud, if I'm not mistaken. Simeration and Gimel Sif Yud, yeah? Makes sense? Yeah. Okay, let's recap Rabbi Say. Simeon Eishnit Nun Gimel Sif Yud Should be page Kuf Yud Dalit Should be page Kuf Yud Dalit Sif Yud So if I say we're learning The chant was putting Really, really before Shabbos, I said, better that you do it now, because if you did a little bit, then it's problem. Ah. It's zero, go ahead. <laughs> ah, so you remember that, Allah. very good. You should know. Okay, I have to say that, Allah, I'll tell you a shadow I got. I got a few minutes before the expansion. Okay. Uh, huh? I, I got it. So how do we... Uh, with him. Don't mute yourself. Mute him. <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Host first, right? Yeah. I'm not host. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. I don't even think I'm host. <laughs> um, I'll tell you a child that I got from you. It's always before the invention. Why is it like that? When it's pressure. It's ten. No, it's just like 10 minutes before the invention. They need to... I don't know when I got that. I'll, I'll tell you when I got a shot. So, my we're learning Dini Shahia, right? So, what are the Dini Shahia? There's an Isser, even though Min Hatayra, you're allowed to put something on the fire right before Shabbos, even though it's going to cook on Shabbos. Your food is cooking on Shabbos. It's not an Isser Bishal because it's not happening. On, you didn't do it on Shabbos. You did it for four Shabbos. You're allowed to open up. The the water for Shabbos and I'll water your grass. The Gemara says, "Paiskin mayim legina." Ah, you watering your grass, Zereya. You did a kaidim Shabbos. Now it's happening with memela. All the lamitas malachis min atoyda. Do it right before Shabbos. You start the process before it happens on Shabbos. Not a problem. However, certain malachis chazal or concern had certain concerns. Chashashis. And because of this, they made certain limitations to what we do before Shabbos 
because we might come to do something also on Shabbos. And one of them is regarding leaving pots on the fire at a Shabbos. So what was the concern? Chazal were concerned if we leave something on the fire at a Shabbos, then it's very, it's possible we will on Shabbos come to stoke the fire. That's called Shema Yechata. Shema Yechata Begichole. Maybe you will do Chitoy, soak the coal. That was very instinctive. You had a, a special stick for it, a shovel, and they would move around the coals to get the fire going better, to hurry up the cooking. So you're going to see your food's not ready yet for the meal. You're worried. You have guests coming. You need to make sure there's a nice soda. You're going to walk over and instinctively play around with the fire. What happens if you play around the fire? You're over on the Isra HaVavara of making a fire. You're making even larger the fire. Mavir. Mm-hmm. And on a, another Isra which you could be over if your food is not fully cooked yet, over is a bishul. Mm-hmm. So you can have two Isra sort of happening in Minat So because of this, because of this concern, Hashem Yechat Tebegechalim, Chazal said that we do not want you <coughs> touching the fire out of out of Shabbos. We do not, out of Shabbos, we want you to put on the fire in a certain manner it's going to cover the chashash. What are the ways? There are three ways Chacham gave to cover the chashash. One way is we, you can put a blech on. What was a blech? In the times of Chazal, it wasn't a blech. They didn't use a blech. They had coals. You had either grufa or ktuma. Grufa means you shoveled out the coals. No chashash, there's no coals to, to stir. You shovel it up, close the door, you leave the heat in there, and you let your, your, your pot cook off the heat of the walls, the stone walls. The other way is ketuma. Ketuma means ash. The word ketuma in, in, in Aramaic, Aramish means ash, kitma. Um, what would they do? They would take a layer of ash and sprinkle it over the fire, over the entire fire. Now, so that will diminish your, your flame a little bit. That will be a gile das. You make a statement to yourself to memorize that I should not come to be mechate gecholim. The fact that I did this act at a Shabbos will, will hold me back on Shabbos. I'll remember that I did some maisa. It will stick in my mind and it will make me not come to touch the fire Shabbos. Okay. So Chazal said, if you do either grufa or ketuma, it's fine. Um, there is a machlek, is what level ketuma you have. From the Rambam and other Rishayim, it seems, you have to put a nice thick layer of ash. However, the Ran, Rabbeinu Nisim, he based on the Yashalmi, he says, afilu ketima kolduhu. In Lashem Aramish, that means ketima kolshuhu. Even a little bit of ash over all the entire body of the fire, is good enough, even a little bit, because that's enough for me to remind myself. Now, although the fire later on will can reignite itself, possibly, goes back to the way it was before, as <clears throat> also that's enough. That's okay. You made yourself a hacker, you remind yourself in your mind, you did something that sticks out in your mind and, and it makes you mem- memorize that you shouldn't come to Mechat I got a question, Rabbi. You said before that if you put the water for the garden before Shabbat, it's okay. Well, what about married iron? People from outside see water, they think we just put it. Yeah, but they don't see you holding the hose and, and mushkin. No, no, the, there's a sprinkling. Fine. They don't, if they see you holding the hose and, 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 uh, and mushkin, no, the tree, then they can see think it. we just put it. Shabbat. No. no. Well, sometimes there could be married In this case, they were not yeah, choshish for married iron. You're allowed to. I remember because you could that. do it in a way which is mutter. Because you could do it in a way which is mutter. Let's say you go to the store. You know, the store has kosher food and tray for food. We don't say you're going to the tray for food. We must probably be waiting for the kosher food. So if you have a way to do it permissibly. Mm-hmm. Now, sometimes we are choshish from our in certain things, situations. Um, so those are the two ways. By the way, in Rishonim, there's some that say, when you do this layer of ash, ketuma, chazal didn't mean you have to cover the entire fire. Just the spot where your pot is sitting. You lift up the pot, you put ash <laughs> on the area underneath where the pot is, so you're diminishing the heat of the fire somewhat, that's enough, even though you didn't do that to all the fire. Some Rishayim hold that way. Other Rishayim disagree, and they say, no, it's not enough. If you still have fire around that you didn't put ashes on, you didn't make a hecker on the entire fire, you're going to come to stoke the uh, 
other parts of the fire to get your pa. That's the halacha the way we hold. The halacha we hold where machmer has to be all the fire, the entire flame. Um, however, on the other hand, where makol, like the ran, it could be a katima kolshu, even just a little bit of a layer of ash is enough. Bismaneinu, what does that mean? We do with the blech. That is our way of doing ketuma, where we put the blech in between. We diminish the fire somewhat, the heat. It's not a lot. It's still very hot there, right? It can cook. It can mm-hmm. burn you. But it's enough to diminish it. That's a big hacker. You come, you see that there. You're not touching the, the fires of Mitzvah Shem, right? Some people say the blech is not enough here because of the... the right. Person. Yeah. Achloikis... Moshe held you didn't need me'ikadim, but it's a chumrah to cover the knobs. Also, Shemizamar Erbach held no need at all to cover the knobs. From what I understand, even the Moshe held it was just a chumrah, not the ikadim. Uh, what I see from Alter Rebbe Shachonarich, it's Masha, you don't have to cover the knobs. Not from halachas here, but from halachas later. So, uh, whatever you have in the store, you go to the store, whatever you have, whatever your wife buys, it's all good. You don't need a black make either. to so cover the knobs. You want? Yeah, you want. You don't have to. If you want, yeah. <clears throat> now, <coughs> the now the other there's another method. This is Shani b'machleikus. The method is like this. The Gemara in Parakira has about two blat discussing this back and forth. Machleikus tanoim between Chananya and Chachamim. Chachamim say, you can leave something without ketumah or grufa, without touching the coals. You can leave a pot on the fire if the food is fully cooked and letting it sit on the fire is detrimental to the food. It's no good for the food. Mm-hmm. You're leaving it there because you want it hot, but it doesn't mean the food is going to be tastier by leaving it there. It's not going to be any tastier. It's going to be maybe a little bit less tasty. Mitzdamek <laughs> veraloi. The tzimuk. The fact that the fire that it keeps them being um, dried out and 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 and, and contracting, it's raloy. It's not something you want. You're not happy with it. It's raloy. But you're leaving it there because you want to have hot food. So the hot the idea of the hot food overweighs, in this case, the slight change in the taste. What were you putting there? Whatever you're putting on erev Shabbos. So chacham say if it's mavusha kotzarke. You can leave it there without any blech. No blech needed. Hanania came and he was mekel. Hanani said, no. Kol shu Anything which is a shear of meichel ben drusoi. You can leave it there on the fire of Shabbos. It's much more lakula. The shear of meichel drusoi. First of all, what does meichel drusoi mean? Ben drusoi was a certain bandit. List him. Uh, that, and uh, he would run, eat his food on the go. So he became, he was eicheh. The being the one who all in halacha and gemara is always quoted, the Maicha ben so he must have had some schus. He was, he was Jewish, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. He probably was Jewish. Ben yeah. so Now, the son of Dusay. You know, they said yeah. there was there was a minig in a certain shtetl that every person you cannot bury a person until a hespit is given. Mm-hmm. Chabad to have a minig, no spade him at all. But over here, the minig was you can't bury the person until you give a hespit. You could the chai, you could the mesa. The kids it was there was one person that there was nothing good to say about him. He was Basha the gangster in town. Mm. There was nothing good to say about him. But the takana was <laughs> you can't bury till someone gets him said a shabach. That's it. The the orange sitting here, everyone's waiting. No one's getting up. There's nothing to say. You can't think of a good thing to say about this fellow. Finally, someone got up and said in Yiddish, he said, And it's given Shener from the Tata, <laughs> who is better than his father. <laughs> They were able to go on to the kvura. <laughs> so Ben Dersai, you know. <laughs> anyway, so Ben Dersai is the machleik is showing him what that shear is. This machleik is not only pertaining to the dinim of shehia, shehia skedei, the living on the fire of Shabbos. Mm-hmm. It applies to kol hatayra kula because these dinim are negayah for how many dinim bishal akum. What's considered bishal akum? Pas akum. What level do the, the, the do you have to cook? And then the guy is cooking a further is not considered cooking, mm-hmm. you know. And 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 they a lot of dinim. When is it considered cooked? Mm-hmm. On Shabbos itself, when are you over Bishel? Mm-hmm. You bring it to the Shir Machel. So what happens with the ready Machel the soy and bring it up to the higher level? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, again, it's a lot of dinim in Torah. Mm-hmm. Eid of Chatzeris, Eid of Tashilin, what type of food are you using? 
So, what is the Shia Machin Osai? Machloik is Yishayna. This Machloik is all over. Rashi holds the Machin Osai is Shlish Bishuli, a third cooked. Rambam holds it's a halfway cooked, Chatsi Bishuli. That's the, that's the Machloik. So, Hanani says Machin Osai, he's Mako. Who do we pass him like? Hanani Hacham. Rishayna and the Sugya are all being Choylik on it. They're having a quote unquote a good time over here. It is showing him this two blot kemat of, of the Gemara's discussion. The Gemara itself discusses back and forth. If the Allah is like Hananiah, it was Meiko, like Hacham is Machmer. And only if it's Mavosha Katsaraki and it's time of Kerala, you can leave it on. Very Machmer. You should just know in the Gemara itself, there's even opinions in Chacham that are even stricter that hold that you can only put it on with a blech. And without a blech, it doesn't matter what, temp, what, what level the food is on, even Mavosha Katsaraki, you can't put it on. Certain Tanoim held that way. But that's the halacha that doesn't, that doesn't come down to halacha. No one passes that way in Rishonim. The Shaila is to be passing like the Chachamim, meaning those Chachamim, who were the most Chachamim, that held Mavosha Kotzarkim and Stam Gorali is allowed, you don't need a Blech. Or do you pass in Chanani and Meichel Nesoy? And there's back and forth, the Gemara is saying Tashma, this way, Tashma, this way, Rayas. Who do you pass in like? Not clear in the Gemara so much. Mm-hmm. So each Rishon, Goes through the whole Gemara, the whole Shaka Vatai, and proves his side that what he feels like. It's like Chachamim or Chananya. And it's very interesting how each Raya can be turned this way and can be turned that way. Each Rishon has his Raya's. Um, now, so the Rif, the Rambam, the Ramban, all hold Lachomra. Chachamim, that's the Ikra Allah, like Chachamim. Have Rashi and Toysis, Abeno Chananel, a Paskin like Chananya, uh, they're Mekel. The Rush has an interesting sheet, though. The Rush says, he sort of like goes in the middle. He explains both sides of the coin. He explains both sheetas and Rishayim. He gives you the both Mahalchim. And the Rush says, listen. Bishvil she Yisrael adukim it's a Shabbos. Oynik Shabbos. Yidin are very much connected. They're very religious about the mitzvah of Oynik Shabbos. Vulayishmu lano lahachmer. They're not going to listen to us if we tell them to be machmer like hachamim. Who wants a food that's Mitzvah Karalai? You don't want a food. You want to be able to put up a food that's a big schmack. So since Leishon Lahachmer Hanach Lahen Leisrael Shen Alpi Haminik Shen Argo Pichanai, leave them alone based on the minik that they are noyig like Chananya. Klal Yisrael is going like Chananya. They're not going to listen to us if we try to be machmer, even if I think maybe we, they sh- really should be machmer. Leave them alone. They have a minute to rely on, like Hanani, let, let, let it go. Who said that? The Rush, Rabbeinu Asher, the father of the Torah. The Rush is one of the Talmidim of the Merami Rottenberg, the famous of Mayor of Rottenberg, was on the tower. The son of No. The Rush was the son of the Merami Rottenberg? I don't think so. That's what I read. Yeah? We'll find out. It's easy to find out. Merami Rottenberg was a Rishon. Who? Merami Rottenberg was a Yeah. Early Shonim. Merami Rottenberg was a Rebbe of a lot of Rishonim. He had a very good class. He had the Talmud, the Rosh, the Mardachai, he was killed at Kiddush Hashem, the Mardachai, um, both printed in the back of the Gemara. The Agoyis Maiminis, which is notes of one of the Rishonim on the Rambam, printed in the bottom of the Rambam. Agoyis Maimunius, it's notes on Ma- Maimon, Maimon's work, the Rambam's work, of Ben Maimon. Um, there were a number of big Chavrai uh, Kaddish in the Maram's uh, Talmudim. The Tashbits, the Tashbits, another one of you showing him. Um, the Tashbits is a, a safer Tashbits cotton, which is written one of the Talmidim of the Mamir Rottenberg. The, the Mamir Rottenberg, when the king put him in jail, he wanted a uh, a ransom, oh right? Yeah, but he didn't right. let Kla Yisrael Wait. to free him, to redeem him, because they wanted an exorbitant, a, a very large sum the king wanted, and the, he didn't want to allow any precedent. So he, he said he's staying there. He refused to be. The king was didn't do anything to him in the prison. They let him be there. They let the Talmidim come visit him every day. But he was not allowed to leave. And they 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 and he had to stay in there. And he was nifter there. He stayed there for seven years. And they wanted to do the after the seven one. years, he didn't after he was nifter, he still didn't let him out for burial. Mm-hmm. Seven years later, came along he, I think his name was Alexander, and he gave the king money. To take it out of Ali Lakfura, Al Tanai, that he's buried next to him. Mm. Today, in Worms, you have them both Kfar right together. Yeah. It's, it's an ancient cemetery, it's not been touched, still there. 
Times of the Rishayim. Rami Rothenberg, next to him is this Alexander. I, I he have had a dream, right? He had, huh? a, he had a dream. Either he was going to lose his life or get to... Uh, he had a choice, a, right? Or he's going to be very rich. Either he's going to die or he's going to be very rich. For this chos. Right. And he's picked that. Can you explain? Is that the big I've seen the picture. You can Google it now. Yeah. But I'm, I know so I, years ago I had a, I have someone, I know a, a certain rabbi and he... He liked very much history, and he went around. He had people taking pictures of old cemeteries, mm-hmm. just going through cemeteries, taking pictures, and setting up genealogy online. He still has some type of website out there, and uh, he went originally took. He got the pictures from uh, people. He knew he heard someone's going to Germany, so please take pictures of all the. And now you could see it all around the picture of the two kvarim over there, the two short. Uh, Germany. Yeah, I I'm a pretty I think I, there was the no, heavy soil. No. Was I'm the, pretty the sure it was world. worms. You could you could just punch it in the computer. I mean, rashi was, uh, rashi was from worms. And uh, uh, rashi, rashi was from worms. Yeah. <clears throat> and Mayit Cotton, look up. The Rashi there talks about how the porches used to look in, in, in where he lived. Mm. Now, so the Mayit says the Rush came with his Mahalich where. The rush, by the way, that's why the rush ran away. The rush ran away from Ashkenaz and went to Sfarad. He went to Spain and he became a rub in Spain. He might have been one of the first Ashkenazi rabbonim in a Sfaradi community. Yeah, he the he was scared they're going to catch him also. And yeah, because he knew he was next. So he, he, he managed to escape. The Rami Rottenberg also tried to escape. The Rami Rottenberg tried to escape. The Rami Rottenberg was caught by a Musser, um, a Mashumid. Mm-hmm. That saw him and recognized him, wow. and in a city that he was escaping, that he was a little running away. Mm-hmm. He was trying to get to the border. And they, they caught him, that's how they, he knew the king was after him. The rush managed to escape. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knew he really realized what's happening. He ran away and he came and he became, he met, he met the Rashba there, mm-hmm. the Rashba, who was a Sfardi, Rabbein Shalim ben Ederet. And he met him there. They had, he had a, the, the rush right somewhere. I think that was like the best time around. And he sat with him for 10 days with the Rashba. Mm-hmm. And he came first there, and they sat and discussed Kolataida, and the rush became a rabbin Svarad in Spain. Mm-hmm. Now, so Lamaisa is getting back, so the rush has this interesting Mahalich, where Le'ishon Lahachmer leave Klai Yisrael Golai Kanani. So we have that over here in Halacha, that the, the Mechaber in Shulchan Aruch, usually the Mechaber set himself up, Rabbi Yosef, made a Bezdin for himself. He writes in Hakdama, my bezin is, is machlaikis and we shine him all the time. What am I going to do? I'm, I pick the rush, the riff, and the rambam. The rush, the riff, and the rambam. And I go up here, right? I follow the majority. In this case, the riff and the rambam both hold you have to follow Chachamim. And the rush is like, you know, like we said before, really, you should be machmer, but so the Bissoyisif is machmer. His bezin, Paskin the Chumrah. He Paskin the Chumrah. The Ramah writes, Yeshoimrim, no, Yeshoimrim, Michael the Soy is enough. The Ramah follows Piski Ashkenaz, since the Bissoy said, now, if God, I'm sorry, the Bissoy said mentions both sheets. Let me we'll go back. So he brings both opinions, but he brings the first opinion and the main opinion. The, 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 the Rambam and the, the, the Rush, and the, the Rambam, the Rif and the Ramban's opinion. Chachamim, that's the Iker opinion. And the ending, he says, there is an opinion, yeah, he's shaming to be followed Chanani, which is Taisa's Rashi in the Rashi, and, and, and Abin Chanani. But the halacha, the klal is, in the Mechaber, whenever you have a stam, v'yeshoimim, halacha kestam. When he brings an opinion b'stam, without saying, like, there is an opinion that says this way, he just says, this is the halacha. Then he says, yeshoimim, some people say differently. Who do we follow? Like, stam, v'yeshoimim, halacha kestam. We follow the stam. So the Yisrael of Hell, the Iker was a stam. Like Chachamim, that was his Rishonim, the Sfardim, the Maaser Rashi Toisus were the Ashkenazim of Rishonim. So the Ramah says, the Minig already became to follow and be Mekul like Chananya. So again, and who do we? What do we follow like in the Shir of Michael Masoi? Is it Shlish or Chatsi Bishulei? So there. He says Machloik is Rashi in the Rambam, where the Ben Zosoy Michael Zosoy means Shlish B'Shulei or Chazi B'Shulei. There, the Rishonim say that Hayoyis the Hilchas Shabbos is very Chamor. We should be Machmer, even though normally by Dini the Rabbanans were Mekel, and this is a Chash the Chachamim set up, so it's an Exeir of the Rabbanan. So really, we should be Mekel and say just a Shlish B'Shulei. But the Ran and uh, maybe the Rush also 
already bring out that because then Shabbos is so chamer, we should be machmer and lachatchilo. We warrant the shear, the more stringent shear of Michael Slay means it should be halfway cooked when you put on a fire. The chalent, the soup, the schnitzel, whatever you want in there and then put it in, should be halfway cooked before Shabbos. Now, if you don't have time, Vishas is chak, but you forgot. You can rely on the opinion of Rashi that Michael the Slay Shlish Bishoy. Because in Ikar Din, by Dinder Abanan, we go always to Kula with this Machloikis. Dinder Rice, we go to Kula, Dinder Abanan, we go to Kula. So if you're third cooked, you're also good to go. Okay? Mm-hmm. So this applies to water, to bread, to any food you're putting up on the fire before Shabbos. There's a third method we haven't mentioned yet, a third way to leave things, Hatter, to leave things on the fire. Third way is not as common. We spoke about it, is putting a raw piece of meat, either a, a, a pot of meat, raw meat, or throwing in a piece of raw meat into a pot of vegetables right before Shabbos. Right before Shabbos comes in, you put in, if that piece of meat will not cook yet, even if it will start to warm up, but it won't cook, become Yatsay lettuce by hot and start to cook before Shabbos, you could put it up before Shabbos. What's the rationale? The Gemara explains this on the first parak in Shabbos. The rationale behind it is like this. This is called Kedera Chaisa, or, or Basar Chai, raw meat. The heter is like this. If you put up raw meat before Shabbos, obviously you're not planning on having it for the night meal, because you're soon going to be having your night meal. The raw meat is not going to be fully ready. So obviously your plan is to have it for the morning. If it's going to be your challenge for the next morning, that's your chamin. You had food for Shabbos. You're supposed to have food on Shabbos. So, Mimad of Shach, you're not going to come to be Mechat of the Eish, to stoke the fire. For tonight's meal, you have no reason to hurry up to get the food ready. You don't need it for tonight. For tomorrow, it will anyways be ready. So, you Messiah Das, the Gemara says, Mesach, Mesach, Yisiyah, Daitimine, you told the Messiah Das from it, so you can put up a raw piece of meat. You don't need God for Kotim. It's not Michael Desoy. Raw piece of meat right before Shabbos, even if it warms up a little bit, as long as it doesn't start to cook before Shabbos, it's fine. Lamaisa Poiskis Manenu say we have an issue today. Our stoves work very well. Cook fast. They cook fast. We're gonna put up a raw piece of meat right before Shabbos. Twenty minutes. It will be ready for the meal. It will be ready. Be a night meal. For the night meal. Mm-hmm. So we're back to square one. The chashash still exists on our stove tops. They say do not rely on this heter. However, they say you could rely on the heter in a crock pot, in a slow cooker. Slow cooker, it's not going to be ready for the meal. It's going to be ready till the middle of the night. Bein kach or in the middle of the night you're not having a meal. So it's anyways going to be ready for the morning. So there's no reason to be choshish. You're not going to touch a slow cooker. You don't know one plays with dials on a slow cooker. You're not gonna, once you put it in there, you put it on your temperature that you decide, low, medium, high, whatever it is on. You're leaving it there. That's it. No one touches it. So there you still have the heter. Right before Shabbos, you can put it in a slow cooker a few minutes before Shabbos. You put it up, let's say, Lich Benchen time. You can put up a pot of Fleishik at Shalom. It has meat in there. Right. No blech, no problem. The meat That's the raw. third heter. The meat is raw. That's the third heter. Now, I had an interesting... Yeah, add kind of what we learned I, until I, now. I, 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 I hear you say it. I'm aware of it. I'm aware of it before tonight, but how do you want to do it if you think about the Shara, if it's not my husband, it's right. That Michael the Say, true, but what's the whole reason why I need to see Michael the Say? Yeah. Let's, we never explained it, but if, my, if something's Michael the Say, Chazal say it's already hot, halfway cooked, a third cooked, okay. so it's going to be ready for the meal. It's already enough ready. You're not fe- you don't feel rushed to get it ready for the night meal when a lot of the work was done already. Mm-hmm. Another Svara brought down, the Altarebbe brings both Svaras down, is since it's cooked to a certain extent, it's edible to b'shas chak. Even normally you don't eat it. B'shas chak, people eat it. And now it's not only b'shas chak. You see people going to restaurants and they ask for raw. medium, raw. They have all different rare, levels. Rare, rare would be uh, raw, more raw. Raw, rare, whatever you want. I can buy f- uh, from here from the raw stuff and give it and start selling it. People <laughs> eating raw stuff today. So sushi is raw fish. Tysus, Tysus, the Tysus and Maid Cotton, I think he talks about that raw, yeah, Maid Cotton, that he said that raw fish is not that healthy. Even the Gemara talks about that raw fish 
You should be able to serve raw fish. It's not the raw fish that our raw fish that we have, or it's not things changed. But the mice of today, people are back to it. They eat the raw fish. A certain grade, it has to be a certain grade. It's a type of fish. No, a certain grade. Like you're going to buy salmon, it can't be a day old. It's not going to be. It's fresh, fresh. You could eat it. Yeah. They're very strict about it. And you can eat it raw. So the sushi yeah. stores throw it all out after a day. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> they, put, they put vinegar. And vinegar, uh, keep it uh, fresh. Uh, uh, so Lamaisa, um, so Lamaisa is because of the two svaras, either because it's already halfway there, so you don't feel the rush to, to mechata, to stir the fire, because it's already halfway there. It will be ready for the meal, don't worry. The other svara is the the day, the day. for the night meal. Oh, night meal. Right. The other svara is that it, it's already edible to a certain extent. So it's not like, you know, you don't feel that uh, the instinctiveness and adrenaline to touch the fire as much mm-hmm. in such a state. Similarly, by, by Kedera Chaisa, or Basa Chai, raw meat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Raw meat, you also don't have any svara that you're not going to be mechat to the ish. Mm-hmm. Because uh, for the night meal, it's not going to be ready. For the day meal, it'll be ready already in the middle of the night. So it's going to be ready anyway. So there's no mimana shach to be into mechat to the ish. When we have this on Shabbat, you're not gonna, up, you're not gonna touch the fire. That's something that you're putting up before Shabbos. Putting up before Shabbos. That's yeah. where you're at. It's yeah. Interesting start this thing because it's reverse psychology. No reason that you have to put a blood because you're not gonna stoke the fire. But here you put raw. You're not gonna stoke. The, that's the whole reason why you're gonna stoke the fire because you want it ready for tonight. So you're gonna make the fire hot. Every night for day meal. He, that, those fires, it wouldn't help. Even if you stoked, it wouldn't help. I don't know what type of fire that is. It's a very minute. <laughs> I don't understand it either. I'm mean, I really don't understand why they didn't have a good fire. Well, but why can't they make a piece of meat? So you're not, you go to I don't understand. Time show and home. I could be because they also made took in Shabbos early. Okay. I have to think if it had to do with the fact that took in Shabbos early. I don't know. So, so it wouldn't be it wouldn't be ready. I don't know. But they didn't have so they. Many. Ate, they weren't going to wait till later, till nightfall to start night. They're going to right oh. right away. They're going to oh, they take Shabbos in and right away. So then it could be asked with that spot. Uh-huh. So good Shiloh, you're asking. He's asking. He was asking. What do you mean? Even those fires? Then they can make nice fires that can cook meat. Why can't you cook a piece of meat? You can make a bottom fire and. Yeah. They, what they used was, I remember, a ton or some type of stove. It wasn't like this. You should just know that they say, they say over, it's not written, but they say the briskerov. The Valvola, the son of Chaim, came to Eretz Yisrael. When he saw the gas stoves in Eretz Yisrael, when he came in the beginning of World War II, and he escaped, and he came into, he, he assumed to him, he thought that there's no cheshash b'chal shami yichata, because these, these fires don't go down. It's being fed by gas the whole time. His mahalach was that the whole shash shami yichata is only when the fire goes down naturally with the time. So you need to stir it up. Our fires don't do that. So he didn't see any reason to put a blech. Well, Maisa, he saw that everyone is shalayim, everyone's using blech. So he was mevatel daite, the cloud Yisrael. He saw that everyone's not knowing this way, but in his mind... No, I don't need it. So, but the lapayol, there was svaris, there is svaris to say the other way, because maybe he wanted to go higher. Even if it's a good fire, fire he wanted to go higher to go cooking the meal. So he, it's not so clear. Mm-hmm. This is what they say in the name of the briskerov. I um, just want to conclude, you know, I had a Shaila. I just was looking it up my phone to see the time. This Friday at 10 o'clock, I, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I got a, a call from someone in Chicago. And he learned in our coil about 10 years ago. And we, we had learned this, this sugi then, the coil. And he said to me that a shriach, Lubavitch shriach in Europe, called him up or messaged him asking, saying that he didn't put up the chalice yet. Before Shabbos, he wants to put in the oven, and it's just a just a few minutes left of Shabbos, almost Shabbos yeah, in Europe yeah, already. Here, yeah. You know, it's seven hours ahead. Whatever it was, it was almost Shabbos yeah, there. Almost Five, was, there wasn't much time. He said the chalice are not going to be halfway cooked for or third way cooked mm-hmm. for Shabbos. And he, so this young man who has not been in touch with me for many many years. I didn't even have his number. He calls me and, and he says to me, yeah, and so-and-so, and he knows that we learned the sugya, so he just kind of asked me to shayla, I guess he didn't have anyone else to ask. And he said, what should he do? This He has his chalas here. He wants to know if he could put his chalas in. I said, I don't know. I, I really can't think of any heter for him. He has no, I, he wants to put chalas in the oven. Not the one on, 
So making a blech gets complicated in the, uh, in the oven. It is a blech. So I said to him, you have to have something that you created, not that pre-exists, like covering. So put it on the buttons, but this is silver foil. Why does it have to be on the fire? That would have been an idea. If you could have like maybe removed the knobs. That would have been a, a, a better swara, yeah? Yeah? That's a no. You can't with a better swara. I didn't have from a swara. It could be he had a electrical or digital one, but he... So you could still put it there. What's the difference? Maybe he could have put a tape, right? So I said to him, listen, what are we taught? I mean, he told... I said to him, you know, I could try to... Give me a few minutes to try to think of something. It's like, I'll tell you, he didn't sound to me like, when he asked me the question, it didn't sound like it was going to be, like he had no chalas for Shabbos. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was like extra chalas he wanted to have. Well, it didn't sound like desperate. Right. I said to him, oh, even if it, you know, it's a big shayla. I don't mm-hmm. see like how you're going to get around it. You know, even these eights are not like chila, these eights. Right. Mm, we could learn about the next simon, but it's not. It can be simon on the coolest of a velvet one. <laughs> Pile them all on. Put it together. Yeah, maybe. Ramesha has a different svara. Ramesha Feinstein has a very different svara. It's a very unique svara to say that there's a, 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 again, he also does not rely on this. He uses that as a tziruf, as a sniff to halacha. The Ramesh is like this. He has a svara to say it doesn't either apply, the shashim, it does not apply to our ovens. What does he say? What, what, what goes on by our ovens? When you turn up the fire with the knob, what are you doing? Just making it last longer. Are you stoking the fire? Or are you, you're adding gas to the fire. When you open up the valve, you're adding more gas. As what's you open up... Huh? What's the difference? The end result is the same. end result is the same, true. But Amisha says like this. You're raising the temperature of the fire. When Chazal made the chash, shami yichata, they were worried you would stoke up the fire. Were they worried that you would bring wood from the shed or wood, wood from the... Throw in a piece of wood. That wasn't the shash. But you're increasing the fire. Increasing that- the fire through giving gas is similar to... Throwing a piece of wood in. Came along Ramesh this chap that the whole idea of how our ovens are set up is not the way things were in the times of Chazal. I, the poil, the shash remains the same that people are in the kitchen, they touch the dials and they flip up and down. True. But this is not the original shash to Chazal. Just like people open up lights sometimes, they walk into a room on Shabbos. So people like to put pieces on it. We spoke about this once. You're not going to it doesn't mean that you're high to do it. So Ramesha holds that it's a tam godel to be maker with other svaras. He would not rely on it himself, but he holds a tam godel to add this to other svaras if you need to, but You're not going to burn the house, but that makes the temperature higher anyways. Meaning it's reverse that you're not stoking the fire because you want to make it cook faster. You're not going to put the house on 450 and burn the house. So Touching the dial doesn't make it move faster. If the chalas are, are, are covered with a uh, silver foil, it's still going to burn yeah. it. I usually don't. I right. usually don't. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're thinking of ideas. You can put the chalas on top of the clock. Next time I have to give them your number. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do when someone's putting you on a spot and just telling you that it's a few minutes going to be Shabbos in Europe? You know, it's like, you know, it's maybe like, much time. I said, maybe he called, said, listen, I can't think of something. Call it, try to get through to another row. So he tells me he's not, listen, didn't sound like he was that desperate. I'm not going to go running around. I just wanted to hear from you if you thought of something. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you know, no, he wanted to take chalas that were raw. Not, not raw chalas. Oh, raw. Yeah, I'm sorry. Raw no, chalas. No, no, no. Dough. Yeah. So, he wanted to put them in a few minutes, which I have no time. No, I'm sorry, it was not clear. Unbaked chalice. I did tell him one eight. So I told him that some rely on putting on a blech in the oven, take a sheet of metal or a piece of some silver foil and put it underneath not gonna be. the chalice. I said, not everyone relies on that. And uh, so how would that make it more, more heavy? Putting the blech underneath. The shail is how you make a blech in the oven. The like Moshe writes, if you want to make a blech in the oven, the, in the oven, the fire, the heat comes from all sides, right. and the, on the stove top is just from the bottom. So the Moshe says you have to make like a box inside. Mm. Right? No one's going to be cooking in a box. Now the, the insert, like a Pesach insert that they used to have. I don't think anyone uses it anymore. But uh, why is it not make that you could put a little ash somewhere? Why does it have to be the whole thing? If you had ash, maybe you could do it. The metal's ash. 
classic adopt on the international space station. The problem with the metal is that we hold that you have to make the hacker. You can't have a pre-existing hacker. No, put, put a piece of metal, like a, put a oh. piece of metal on top. Why the whole thing? Why? On the bottom? Yeah. Oh, yeah, if you could do it from where the heat source is. Excellent. No, even if the heat source is on top, but put it just on the bottom. Why do I have to cover the whole, all the fire? No, because the whole idea of the hacker is that it's in between the fire and the pot. It is, but not all over. So I, I told them that there is such an opinion, right. which I remember is Makel, to put, don't have to put a whole box right. in the oven, right. that you put a, uh, either another pot, you flip over another pot, put it on top, right. or you put a blech so and sit on it. it I told them this. I told them, but I don't think, I don't think everyone holds of it, but he said that this person didn't sound desperate, so he's not gonna, he's not gonna tell them. So he said, okay, I told them you could do that. Tell them I would, I, you could rely, if you need to, you can rely on this. You know, I if you need to rely really on this, that's what I told him. I don't know when he's going to eat the because I'm going to be boiling half out of time by the meal. Uh, maybe two hours later. Yeah. Yeah. It's just interesting that I got the Shaila. It's just uh, exactly 10 people, you only. Yeah. 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 Thank you for all the days. Okay, thank you everyone for joining. Okay, thank you. And David from Florida joined. He's in Florida already? Yes. yes. Oh, that's sweet. He moved, he moved. He moved. David. He moved. Yeah. Mazel tov. David moved. Mishana Moke, Mishana Mazel. Oh, man. Oh, man. I heard you didn't. You had some cold weather the past few days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, down to the six 